Hey guys, this is Matt here to help you tackle the respiratory physiology section. There's lots to cover, so let's get down to it. Lung volumes are a super high yield topic and are basically guaranteed to show up on your exam, so you should know them backwards and forwards. Establishing a solid understanding of these lung volumes will not only translate to well-deserved points on the exam, but it will ease your mind about the exam as a whole because of how often these are tested. Once you have them down, practice drawing out the graph we're about to cover, so come exam day, you'll be able to draw it quickly and reproduce it on your marker board. First, let's define some terms. We're going to go through the terms using this graph. Lung volumes are these four individual measurements, all of which are graphed over time. The inspiratory reserve volume is the amount of air that can be inhaled after a normal inspiration. The tidal volume is the volume of air that moves in and out of the lung with each normal respiration. This is an important parameter when establishing the efficacy and therapeutic nature of mechanical ventilation. The expiratory reserve volume is air that can still be forced out after normal expiration. That's when you blow out as much air as possible. I like to think of it as the low tide mark, where the water on the beach is air in the lungs. It's as low as it's going to get naturally, but there's still some water left in the bay, like there's still a little bit of air left in your lungs after you force everything out. So what do we call the leftover air in the lungs after a maximal expiration? This is the residual volume. Interestingly, residual volume and any lung capacity that includes residual volume can't be measured by spirometry because these patients can't actually move the air across the spirometer. An easy way to remember the order of the different lung volume components is with the mnemonic LEADER, where L stands for lung volumes, and each subsequent letter is the first letter of the lung volume component on the chart. So what factors affect lung volumes? Lung volumes tend to be greater in tall people, smokers, and in people who live at high altitudes. For example, in COPD, an obstructive lung disease strongly associated with smoking, the patient can't blow as much air out of their lungs due to the obstruction of the airway. Can you guess which one of the lung volumes is subsequently increased in this disease? It's the residual volume, because there tends to be more leftover air sitting in the lungs after forced expiration. This is sometimes referred to as air trapping. Now, it's also important to understand how the different lung volumes are related to each other, and how they can be determined. A capacity is made up of multiple lung volumes. The inspiratory capacity is the tidal volume plus the inspiratory reserve volume. It reflects the total volume of air that can be inspired. Functional residual capacity is the volume of air in the lungs after normal expiration. So if that's the case, which volumes comprise the FRC? That would be the expiratory reserve volume and the RV. The vital capacity is the tidal volume plus the inspiratory reserve volume plus the expiratory reserve volume. Basically, it's everything except the residual volume. So it represents the total amount of air you would breathe in if you first exhaled as much as possible and then inhaled as much as possible. Okay, finally, how do we determine total lung capacity? Well, basically it's everything. IRV plus TV plus ERV plus RV. So in COPD, will the TLC be increased, decreased, or will it not change at all? It's going to be increased. Remember, Air trapping occurs in these obstructive lung diseases, which increases the residual volume and thus the total lung capacity. Lung volumes are important in the diagnosis and management of many lung disorders and are likely to appear on step one. Let's take a look at how a question might be posed. You see a 55-year-old coal miner with a long-standing cough and progressive shortness of breath. He has inspiratory crackles, and you see patchy, bibasilar interstitial infiltrates on the chest x-ray. So what would you expect the lung volumes to be like on pulmonary function testing? Well, this is likely a case of coal workers' pneumoconiosis. 
All of the pneumoconioses are restrictive lung diseases. In contrast to obstructive processes, restrictive lung diseases are typically characterized by decreased lung volumes, including total lung capacity. Let's do a quick flash quiz. Which letter corresponds to functional residual capacity in this image below? It's F. Remember, functional residual capacity is the volume in the lungs after normal expiration. A lung capacity is the sum of multiple lung volumes.